obsolete at the Pioneer Power Show in the Great Northwest. This is a really nice show. It has a lot of interesting stuff in it. We're going to show the engines and tractors and machinery, and sawmill, a lot of different stuff. And we'll talk, have information on it. And at the end, we'll talk about our display and how it's pertinent to the Northwest here. So enjoy the video.
Mr. Obsolete here. Mr. Obsolete's vintage homesteading. We're at the Pioneer Power Show in the Northwest here. We've got a nice display here. We're going to show you the engines and things. The theme is logging and farming. So the, we've got chainsaws since they were so popular in the Northwest here for logging. Start out with a McCullough Model 47. This is the first style of saw that they made for a one man operation. The first McCullough saws were actually a two man saw. But this revolutionized the chainsaw industry. It was the first one you could run on its side, uh, weighed 25 pounds, which is considered a lightweight saw for the time. And uh, they made these for quite a few years in different displacements. And we move up to the Mac 15. This is a first homeowner's grade saw that McCullough made. Yeah. They had relatively short bars and stuff, and medium power, but for the time they were real effective for what you could do and stuff. This was used as a farm saw basically, and light logging industry work. These were made in the mid 60s. And they made lots of these. This is the first series where they started to make the bigger engine blocks, which became the, the king of the woods for many years. Next we've got a 1010 McCullough. This is a homeowner saw again, but it's a very reliable, lightweight, and really nice little saws. This is a model 795, this is the late 60s. That was a commercial logging saw. They have a big powerful saw, they weigh about 25 pounds without the bar and chain and you could run up to a 60 inch bar. They have a can of McCullough chainsaw oil. McCullough bar and sprocket oil. This one is an unusual saw. McCullough sold it for one year but it's not really made by McCullough, it's made by a Swedish partner company. McCullough had kind of gotten out of the commercial saw market. A lot of people working in the woods wanted a big saw, so they bought these. It's 100 cc, big, powerful saw. And uh, then the other saws that I like and use, because I'll use all these. I don't have any modern saws, so the ones that I use are Pioneers and McCullough's, because they're the best. This is a little lightweight homeowner saw. Works really good cutting small firewood and stuff. Here's an original Pioneer hat. Pioneer oil. This one was sold as a homeowner, heavy duty homeowner for working on farms and stuff. And they used them a lot in the woods. These are a Canadian saw, but they're quality wise and power wise are the equal of the McCullough's. Next one we have is a P51, it's 82 cc. This is a commercial saw we used out in the woods. Very popular in Canada, very powerful, super well made, really nice saws. This is the early Pioneer. This is a 1951. And the uh, features on this, you can see the bar sideways. The carburetor was a float carburetor, so fuel was supplied by gravity. For these, you can turn them sideways or upside down and run them. The early ones like this, you had to rotate the bar like that to cut down and cut sideways. That was one of the first so-called lightweight commercial saws. And we're back to axes. So, this is my most used axe. I use this for lemming, splitting firewood brushing all kinds of things so this is the one that's called a tool because it's in as used condition and the one over here is art axe art so the other thing here was marine stuff so we'll come over here and talk a little bit about it. One of the themes here was about the marine industry in the northwest here. There's lots and lots of lakes and then there's the Puget Sound. So we'll start with this as an 1814 motor go. Teens. These were 
made by Lockwood Ash. I steer with a rudder. This is the first year that Sears sold outboard motors. And we go to the 20s. This is a 1929 Elto. It stands for Evan Rude Light Twin Outboard. It has a magneto ignition, a battery ignition, I should say. It has a folding lower unit. They were designed by Ole Evan Rude, but he'd sold the Evan Rude company and made so much money on these, he bought it back. So now we'll go to the 1930s. A 1937 Bendix, two and a quarter horsepower. Made by Bendix Aviation Company. They made brakes and all kinds of other things. Magnetos. And a lot of magnetos for World War II for the fighter craft. And move into the 1940s. We got a 1941 Sears Water Witch. These were made by the Kissel Car Company, which became West Bend Aluminum at one point. And uh, these were poor runners and made poorly and stuff, and that's why it's called Sears and Roback instead of Sears and Roebuck. They didn't run very good. Then we get into the 50s here. We get into a really fine motor. This is a 1950 Martin 20, two and a third horse. These were made by National Presto. They're still in business today making pressure cookers. Really, really nice. Castings and workmanship on these were superb. They were one of the best motors ever made. Made them from 47 to 54. And then we got one other saw here we'll bring out in just a second here. This saw is by Steel 075, 111 cc. This is what I use for cutting kindling. Just kidding. <laughs> Anyway, it has a 60-inch bar. It's the second largest saw that's still ever made. And they were real popular in the Northwest. Big trees, but the big trees are gone, and so are the big saws. Just a quick recap of the Pioneer Power Show. This show and that group of people started out many years ago. Over the years it kind of dwindled down and almost disappeared and due to the hard work and piece of property donated to the club and stuff. It's really going good again. It was uh, one of the better shows I've been to. Excellent selection of motors, a lot of real rare ones and stuff. A lot of really nice restored tractors. Just a lot of neat stuff. A lot of interesting nice people. Um, since I uh, was talking about logging, farming, and the marine industry in the Northwest, you know, it's always interesting to talk to people who worked in the woods in the different industries and the stories of their parents and them working in different jobs and stuff. Something you just don't hear about much anymore. Today a job is just a job. A job used to be an adventure. So just a shout out to Mr. King. He recognized my shirt. And, Come over, gave us some really nice comments, and hoping to keep our channel going and expand on it as we go. We want to cover a lot of different things, but if there's things that you people would like to see more of, uh, you know, just send us a comment and stuff, and we'll try to expand it out and go into things that are the most important to you to learn about or watch. Plus, we always do history on stuff when we have it just like on the garden tractor and different things, chainsaws at the show and the outboard motors. So anyway, we just like history. It's interesting. It's a different perspective than reading a book. A book doesn't cover all the real things that happened during the Depression and all the different things, ups and downs, the economy, and all the things that made our country so good. So we'll see you on the next video. Remember, vintage is always better.